Welcome to the Be Wise Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Wright, where we discuss politics, social issues, sports, and entertainment. So today we're going to discuss uh, Byron Daniels, Republican congressman from Florida. Um, he's been making the circuit around. He was um, a candidate for vice president as well. Of course, J.D. Vance pulled that out. and uh, But he's very strong. Um, someone that's very strong in Trump's corner. Um, I like him particularly because um, I like Black Republicans. I like Black conservatives because they're going against the status quo. Um, a lot of the uh, shows that I do will be geared towards uh, Black conservatives and people who are independent thinkers and trying to think outside the box when it comes to politics and uh, making a difference in our communities. Um, this is an interesting show because um, this is uh, Byron Daniels. He's on the CNN uh, desk and this was after one of the Trump rallies and Trump says something, you know, you know, Donald Trump, he's a little crazy. And um, everybody got all in a tiff and it was facts versus emotions. And um, it's really good. But I like uh, Byron Daniels because he holds his own. Um, he's not scared. He doesn't sweat. And basically he stands by his convictions. And we need more of that um, from our, our politicians. And I'm not saying stand your ground when you're wrong. But when you can, when you have facts to back up what you're saying, um, and you also stand by your candidate, that's what I'm talking about. So it, it makes your your, const your constituency feel good. The people that support you, that you're not, you know, you're not weak. Um, so I do like strong people. So what I wanted you to do is um, take a look at um, how he handles himself on the desk. And I'll be showing you more strong uh, black conservatives throughout these episodes. And I think you'll pretty much, you know, you'll get a kick out of this. Donald Trump taps into American carnage as voting gets underway across the country. And is he getting policy ideas from a B-list Hollywood movie? Well, that's because what he is saying sounds like it was ripped from the pages of The Purge. It's a movie franchise, but here it is. Business, right? They don't pay rent. The, the, the city doesn't have money. The whole, it's a chain of events that's so bad. One rough hour, and I mean real rough, the word will get out and it will end immediately. End immediately. One day of whatever you want, I guess. It is a literal movie plot, but real life policy? Well, it's not policy. And this is red meat for the base because they don't ask questions about, well, how would you do this and how would this work? It's just red, red meat. And I think it works for the base, but um, it actually, it reminded me of The Purge first. And then it reminded me more of The Hunger Games mm -hmm. where the, the ruling class puts a bunch of people together every year and says, you guys kill each other to show control and instill fear in an electorate, in the citizenry, if we're comparing movies. Um, but this is real life. And this is the kind of thing that turns off the people he needs to win. People in swing states who are undecided, who want to hear policy solutions, not stuff like this. I mean, but in all seriousness, Congressman, I mean, is he suggesting that cops can do whatever they want for a day and that will actually solve the problem? So I like Essie Cup. First of all, she was the uh, lady that was talking with the glasses on. Um, she used to be on MSNBC. Uh, and by the way, just just for uh, full disclosure and for the record, I was a very, very liberal person. And all I watched was MSNBC for a long time. Didn't realize they were pulling the wool over my eyes. And now and now I don't even watch mainstream media at all. I love these clips from CNN because it gives you, it just confirms that um, it is not good for our souls and it's not good for our minds. Um, but you do get to pull out some of the tricks of the trade if you watch mainstream media. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to point out SC Cup, but she she teed you up. You know, if you watch TV, she she got him she got the emotions going, made you think that everything that Donald Trump was saying was ludicrous, um, compared it to a movie like The Hunger Games. Um, and what was the other movie? The Purge. If you if you see The Purge, you'll see it's just totally rid ridiculous to compare those um two situations. But I want you to take a look at um Byron Daniels face. He's flat. Like everything that you've said so far doesn't move me, doesn't bother me, and I'm ready to uh take you guys on 3v1. Watch this. No, he's not. And I, even the the clip you just played, what's it? 5 seconds out of for Donald Trump an hour speech. I think a lot of times people say, "Oh, well he said this." 
for five seconds. Yes, he says he says things that are unscripted. He goes off the cuff, off the cuff. He's not serious. There's no policy behind that. But I think where the American people truly are is they at least want to hear what somebody is thinking full throated versus Kamala Harris, who is completely scripted. Like now, did you Keith is the other um, black gentleman who's about to just go full bore emotional and cry and everything like that and make complaints. But did you see the eye roll? I want you to pay attention to his eye roll. Um, he he he's not even listening. He doesn't buy anything that um, that Byron is saying. But I think where the American people truly are is they at least want to hear what somebody is thinking full throated versus Kamala Harris, who is completely scripted, yeah. like badly so. scripted. I guess I wonder. And there's nothing coming what out is of her. the policy then? If it's yeah. not that, then what is actually the solution? He wants to make sure that police are supported. So they're upholding the law in every city in our country. I was in uh, Dwayne. That guy right there, the white guy, he's the other conservative that's always on the desk. He gets beat up on a lot. I don't even know why. He must. He has to make a lot of money. His job is to be the conservative punching bag for CNN. And um, yeah, it's kind of like the show on Fox, The Five, where they have uh, four conservatives and one liberal. Well, CNN copied that. Now they have always three or four liberals and one conservative. So he's the punching bag. He's not going to say anything uh, through this entire segment because he knows Byron Daniels and he already knows that this guy can hold his own. I don't need to say anything. Wayne Reed last night here in New York, just trying to get razor blades so I can get a fresh shave to today. for today. <laughs> I had to press the button for the, for the attendant to come to open up the case just so I can get a pack of razor blades. That's what's going on in every major city of America. Americans are fed up with that kind of stuff. It happens because you do have a dereliction of support for law enforcement in too many cities in America. And so there's a major angst going on amongst the American people. Donald Trump said a comment for five seconds. That's not setting policy. That's Donald revealing Trump, the angst of, of the American Don, people. Donald Trump has a history of saying inflammatory things. It's not just those five seconds, Congressman, and you know mm -hmm. that. He has a history that goes back from the time when he first ran for office, and he's talked about telling people in his rallies to knock the crap out of him. He, he had a history, even when I was working here at CNN, he was telling people how CNN is the enemy of the people. And you know what? A guy named Caesar Sayek sent pipe bombs to this building or not to the other building that CNN used to be in and tried to kill people. Donald Trump says things that get people hurt. When he talked about liberating Michigan, what happened? Gretchen Whitmer, the governor of Michigan, they tried to kidnap her. There's a plot to try to kidnap her. Look at Byron's face. Flat. Like, he's like, I'm not moved by anything you're saying. You know, facts over feelings, my guy. Um, if you want to blame Donald Trump's rhetoric for someone throwing a pipe bomb in a building or someone being kidnapped, go ahead. You do you. Rock on. But I'm not going to buy that. When, when, every time he says something that, that's just five seconds, inflammatory statements like that, what happened when we have January 6th? It's because Donald Trump opened his big mouth and wouldn't shut up. And I wish so, so at some point, Congressman, you would at least have the courage to stand up to your to your dear leader and tell him what he's doing wrong. Are we going to talk just about, apologize are we gonna talk now about the rhetoric Don't just directed, for him? Are we going to talk about the rhetoric directed at Donald Trump? Because we do realize well, that he's been well, trying to kill him. Are you going to continue to, to try not to answer, answer the question? Take his life. So, so you're gonna not going to answer what I just said. Hang on one second. Let's talk about that. Let's actually talk sure. about course, rhetoric. Because here's what uh, Trump supporters have been saying. People hear this violent, dangerous rhetoric, and we're going to have a copycat. It's coming. And uh, it's just unfortunate. Somebody's going to get killed. I'd say that's pretty strong evidence that the left needs to tone down the rhetoric and needs to cut this crap out. Somebody's going to get hurt by it. It works when we see the liberal elite literally trying to take out a political opponent. Now, do they cause it? Absolutely. They contribute to it. They're complicit with it because of their words. So according to those uh, gentlemen there saying that Trump is a threat to democracy is violent rhetoric, but Trump saying... Let's just have one really violent day. That is not violent rhetoric. He didn't say violent. He didn't say violent. I'm going to play the clip. No, no, he didn't say Trump, one violent day. Trump That's not even what he said. But let's let's be honest about what can he play, actually said. Can we play, play it again. Trump again? Play it again because he didn't even say that. But go ahead. Can play we it play again. it again? I want to hear. <laughs> All these stores go out of business, right? They don't pay rent. The, the, the city doesn't have money. The whole, it's a chain of events. It's so bad. One rough hour, 
and I mean real rough, the word will get out and it will end immediately. End immediately. How is that not violent rhetoric? We have to acknowledge the reality going on in every city in America. Not answering the question. Is mass- not answering the question. That is answering oh, the question. How is the reality in America, hold on, Keith, the reality in America is that crime is massively up. It crime is, so- is not massively yes, up. That's is. a lie. You can bang the table crime- all you want, you're but that's You're lying, true, Congressman. Man. You're lying. We already know that there is The FBI just released data this week that crime is going down. We already know that crime Oh my so God! Why do you, why, Abby? Why do you let this man lie on your national I'm, national I'm not lying. Like I'm this. telling you that exactly. This is not right. You may you not want to. You may not want to. No, you're lying because you're lying to me. Be you you now. Me so I want to be respectful of what you're trying to say. Hang on a second. Go ahead. You would just let Go me ahead. talk. I will explain exactly what you want me to explain. We have the data. The FBI literally put out data today showing that crime is down this year for the first six months of the year. But look at the trend line. All right. Look at this data right here. This is a six month you know, you know, whatever criteria, pool of data and, and January 24 to June 24. Okay. That's not enough time to show whether crimes are really going up or down. And we all know crime is less in the winter and then it peaks in the, in the, in the spring and summer. So she's going to show another graph that's going to bury her whole, you know, narrative. Okay. The, the, uh, crime is down in all these different categories. And then mm-hmm. there is a trend line that shows that crime is going down. So, why, I, I, why do you continue to say that? I, I, so look at this graph right here. So crime is steady along. And you can start from 2015. This is till, uh, the time Trump's been in office, of course. It peak goes up a little bit, 17, dips a little bit, goes up. And then the pandemic hits. And then it drops because we're on lockdown. No one's outside. Everyone's just kind of like doing their thing. And they're doing DoorDash. And the people are just, there's just no crime. There's no stores are open. The only crime actually was the protest. You know, burning down um, stores and homes and protesting in the streets. That's and viol- that was the violence. But then, as soon as uh, the the pandemic was over, it spiked back up again. And um, Byron's going to make a, a test of that and tell you explain explain why. I do think, though, oh, in, in some I'll place, let you get in, but I do want the Congress oh, sure, to answer sorry, that. Sorry. <laughs> if you look at crime rates in the United States since. Since the pandemic to this current point, this current period in time, crime is up. Okay, year look over the, the look over the, the years, crime is up. Violent crime is up. I'm looking right okay. now. Okay. Crime chart. is on its way down. It has not returned to pre-pandemic levels yet, but it is trending down. Well, that is a I'm, fact. I'm looking at your chart right now. 2021 is when Joe Biden and Kamala Harris came into office. Look at that spike up in violent crime. What okay. Donald Trump? Do you see where it went after Abby, 2021? Abby, is this is important. This is important. But you, I don't understand. You know, what you're this is really important. Up, no, crime, want, is, crime is going down. Put the chart back up. Put the chart back up. Put it back up. Crime. The, look, you at, you look, look at where it's going. 2021, 2021 oh, which is when up. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris came into office in 2021. The trend line is up for violent crime in the United States of America. And you know what? That is an empirical fact. I'm not going to sit here and let this man. That's your chart. It's not even mine. I just saw it for the first time. I just saw the chart. I'm not going to sit here and let him. Keith should be fired. He's very unprofessional right now. He's calling a congressman a liar. First of all, that's disrespectful. And he's like, I'm not going to let this guy lie. You don't, you're not the CEO of CNN. If I was, after this was over, I would tell Abby, he's never to be on your show again. He was very unprofessional. That's just my opinion. Well, what I, what I, what I want no, no, no. Wait, wait ahead, one second, ahead, because we, we're, we have silly. to... Hold on. It's not silly when people we have when to source, source, Congressman, and I'm sorry, just give me I'm sorry, second, Abby. Please. Go ahead. Of course. Absolutely. We have to deal in facts here. Thank you. Okay. It's 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 clear as day. The the FBI put out statistics for the first half of this year. Yeah. The numbers, the trend lines are going down in all of those different categories: murders, rapes, robberies, property crime, aggravated assault. For 2023, the trend line is going down. If you don't believe the FBI, independent people who look at these numbers say the same thing. So needless to say, um, <laughs> it doesn't take a, a rocket science to show that that was a 3v1. He didn't, he didn't have a chance, and, um, but he held his own. I'm going to be showing you over the next coming weeks strong Black conservatives in media, in podcast, and in politics. And it's just going to blow your mind because... There is no way that we, the, my race, the black race should be 90% voting for Democrats consistently and consecutively. A lot of these uh, gentlemen and men and women are saying that Donald Trump may garner 20 to 25% of the black vote this year. 
if I was to rely on TikTok and believe that, I would say it's, it's very feasible um, that that could happen. But um, I don't know because you can't believe polls, but I can tell you that there's a lot more independent thinkers, thinkers of color. Um, Sage Steele, who used to be on ESPN, even said that she was in hiding. She was in the closet when it came to voting and her support of conservative ideas. So I believe a lot more people are coming out. And um, I myself have uh, more conservative ideas. Um, the left has gone too far left for me. And I do uh, fiscally conservative economics, uh, community jobs, all that kind of stuff. I'm really looking um, more right than left these days. So, all right. I just wanted to point that out. Uh, pay attention to the next episode of the Be Wise podcast. Don't know what it's going to be, but look for it on YouTube. Please follow, like, subscribe, the whole nine. And um, I talk. I'll talk to you guys later. You guys have a good one.